Alright, so welcome back to a new one on this channel and on this occasion is Alter Boy from Sound Toys. Everything on this guide is in chapters, so if you look at the description or the timeline, you can jump to a section or skip the ones you don't want. If you like this guide, please like and subscribe. If you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, you can. You have the QRs on the screen or check the links at the description. So before we can deep dive into the controls, I need to talk about something else, the input and the drive. This plugin has two different faces. First, on the, in the left side, you have the pitch informant manipulator. And on the other side, you have a completely different thing, which is gonna be the tube saturation. Now the saturation that you have right here, it's from the decapitator. This plugin, it's not ultra clean. When on, all the way wet, right, is going to add a little bit of flavor and coloration. This is with all the way on. It's adding a little bit of bump right here at the top, but it's just, you know, cutting the super lows and the super highs. As is, if I go dry all the other way, you know, we don't get it. Now, of course, if you move the mix control, you're going to get some in-betweens, but going all the way wet is just going to give you that. As I go up in the drive, you know, it's going to introduce, again, saturation. Now, this is a representation. It doesn't have to be this way, you know, that aggressive. But yeah, it's just going to give you saturation. Now, the drive, it's all the way down and wet is all the way up. So if I check the harmonics that we get with this, it is that we do get some harmonics. So whatever input signal, you know, how loud is, uh, is going to affect the overtones that you're going to get right here, the saturation part. So if I go down, it's going to, you know, we're going to get less. But as soon as you go up and you drive it more, you are going to be getting more. And right now, I'm just driving the input. I'm not driving using the drive. If I go up in drive, of course, you're going to get more and more and more. It's going to get more saturated. So if you thought this plugging was clean, no, it's not clean. And, you know, that's actually part of the fun. It gives you a little bit of coloration and saturation. And on top, we get, you know, uh, the pitch shifting part. Okay, so since now I know that you know that this adds a little bit of coloration and saturation, we need to talk about the main part of this plugin, which is the modes and, you know, the pitch and the format. So uh, when we go to pitch, uh, this is going to be a pitch shifter. It's going to go all the way up one octave or it's going to go all the way down one octave. And don't worry, we're going to use this on some vocals. Now, sometimes when you move the values, you really want to see what you're doing right here. If you click right here, the, uh, the name of the knob is just going to let you you know the value. It's okay, so I have a test tone right here and it's right there in C. If I keep going down, it's just gonna detune it, right? So it's just a pitch shifter. And again, it sounds it sounds pretty cool. If I keep going up, go all the way up, is one octave up and one octave down. So I guess I don't need to explain this, it's just pretty simple. Now then you have the formant. Now, uh, the formant is a little bit different from pitch shifting. It's got nothing to do. The formant, what it does, is going to change the tone. So, it means that the formant doesn't change the pitch. The only one that does it is going to be the pitch. Now, again, if I put the test tone, I know that by changing the pitch, I'm changing to different pitch, uh, different pitches. But if I go to formant, by changing this, I'm going to go louder on the saw so you can hear how it sounds. If I go down in formant, notice that it's not changing pitch but it's darker, so it's changing the tone. If I go up in the formant, it's gonna go brighter, right? But again, the tone, the, the actual, you know, note, the key doesn't change. So when you use this on a different material, maybe not a saw, a vocal, or any, or any other instrument, this is going to change how it sounds, and this is going to change the pitch. Now, these two knobs, you can link them, so when you go up in pitch, it's going to go up in formant, and so on and so on. You can unlink it, you can offset it, but when you link it, the formant will only lock to whatever you have on the pitch. Okay, so all this is just cool, but, you know, it would be nice to try it on some vocals, maybe something else where we can, uh, we can really hear what it does. So I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be playing something. Baby, all right, some vocals. To me, don't give up so cool. So easily. again, the drive. Open up your eyes. And just gonna see. really. There's more drive. to our story. Okay, so what if I Baby, wanted to do pitch? Open up to me. Don't now let me just do it without so formant. Easily. Open up your eyes and see. And of course, as you go up, There's you keep changing. You know the pitch. Story. If I go all the way down, Baby, open up to me. Don't give up so 
So also notice that the vocals are pretty narrow, but as you detune it, it gets a you know it's a little bit stereo. Especially if you're using a stereo track on your DAW. Fine. Open up your eyes and see there's more to our story. So then the format, remember, changes the tone, not the pitch. So if I play it again and I start changing it, it that it goes wider. But of course, it's changing how it sounds. Almost robotic. Alright, so remember, you can link it, do both are the same. Story, baby, open up to me. Don't give up so easily. Open up your eyes and see. There's more to our story. Okay, so again, this is a pretty simple plugin. You have your pitch, your formant, your drive. And that's it. Now, the most important tool in this plugin, in my opinion, is the mix control. Because you can, if you wanted to, move the pitch up. But I guess that maybe on your DAW, you have better algorithms to do this. So you don't need to use a plugin if you want to pitch it up, you know, maybe one semitone or two or three or four. So the trick is that you can detune it a little bit or maybe just change the format, which is going to change the tone. And then you can, you know, go down on the dry and the wet and you're going to be getting something else. That's, you know, that's the plan. So if I play it back, let's say I'm going to be changing the format and go up by seven. So it's, it doesn't it doesn't sound very good, right? It just doesn't. If I go down on the wet, I'm going to be getting, you know, the, the dry signal. But something else in the background. This is why this plugin is so cool. Open up your eyes and see there's more to our story. Baby, open up to me. Don't give up so easily. Dry. Open up your eyes and see. But something else going on. So this is where this plugin really shines. You can change the pitch, you know, play around with formant, the pitch, the drive and everything else. And then just, you know, do, do go down in the mix just to create a nice blend and get something else to the vocal, you know, give it something, something special. So these three modes give you very different results. Transpose it's a, is the one we've been using, right? And it's very simple. The pitch transposes to whatever we select on the pitch. Uh, go, go up and it goes up in pitch and it goes down in pitch, right? Yeah, very simple. This is the default mode. Now the quantize what it does tunes your input to the nearest chromatic semitone and it's going to do it automatically and as quickly as possible, right? That's the, the definition. Now, the thing is, uh, uh, to you know, to give you a description of how this sounds, it's a, a kind of a, that auto tone, kind of a moving the pitch, it gives you that effect. And I'm all the way wet. I'm going to go to maybe pitch. There's more to like it's just kind of a moving. If I do transpose, it's more static. We just don't get that. But the quantize gives it gives it that that that's, uh, that auto tune trying to to tune it to the, the correct pitch. Now this is an effect that maybe you just don't like it or you just don't use it if you don't want to. But, you know, it's just an effect. You know, just an effect. It's going to try to adjust it to the semitone. Now, again, we can go to wet. And it's going to give you... I'm going to go to 7. If I go to transpose... But it sounds different. It depends, it depends on, you know, it depends on what you want to use. It's completely up to you. Let's go up in the mix. So yeah, they are way different. Now, then you have the robot. So this is going to give you a robotic kind of, kind of a sound. 
uh, it, it's going to lock it to a single note. So yeah, it's kind of a vocoder type of deal right here. So uh, I'm going to go back to zero and zero and mix all the way up. And I'm going to play it again. Baby, and I'm going to go to robot. To me, don't give up, right? So we get that effect. What is it? It sounds like a rob robot. If I go up... Or if I go down, you know. Yeah. But, but yeah, again, we can hear that it's just locking to a pitch. Because this is just, you know, giving you that vocoder type of deal. Now with vocoders, what you can do, you can feed a MIDI, you know, a MIDI instruction or maybe some notes and that pitch where we are, you know, being locked, we can change it manually with some MIDI, with a MIDI, MIDI clip, or we can just change it with a, a MIDI keyboard, right? All right, so right here I'm on, on the on Don, I'm using Bidwick right now. Uh, the, this, the plugin, you know, this plugin, it listens to incoming MIDI signals. So if you're using a MIDI keyboard and the plugin or the channel, you know, whatever you have it, is listen, listening to MIDI, to MIDI signal, is going to be changing the pitch. Right now, it's not listening. So if I play my keyboard, nothing happens. Now on Bitwig, what you can do, if you're standing on an audio track, you can uh, use a note receiver. If you're on a different DAW, you might need to do it on a different way. In this case, this is what is listening to the instrument 2, which is a MIDI track. So now if I play the keyboard, notice that it's just receiving MIDI information and it's going to alter the pitch knob with whatever controller is that you're using. So in this case, I'm just going to stand right there. And now what we can do, we can play back and with the keyboard, just change the pitch like you would with a vocoder. Open up your eyes and see there's more to our story. Now, of course, you don't need to use always a MIDI keyboard if the track that you're listening or this plugin is listening, it has some MIDI information, it's gonna follow it. So if I stop it and play it back, notice that it's just following the MIDI clip. Oh, right. So again, this works just that uh, a vocoder. And on top, remember that you have the mix knob. So you can create harmonies, which is really, really, really cool. There's Again, just a pretty cool, store. pretty cool plugging. Now, uh, at first glance, you see it and, and say, okay, it's, you know, it's a pitch and formant and a little bit of drive, that's all. But again, it's just, uh, if you have a vocal track or even maybe a synth or maybe a guitar, if you want to do a little bit of detuning or maybe even formant detuning and then go down on the mix control and provide a little bit of, of drive, it's going to give you that extra something. So, okay, so that's it. That's the whole plugging. Hopefully you like this, all of this and learned something. And remember, if you liked all of this too, like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, you can scan the QR code on the screen or you can go to the links at the description and you have uh, links for PayPal, you have Patreon and you have YouTube. Thanks. All right, so thanks for watching and see you on the next one.